Riveting content. Empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at thesphere.tv or call us at area code 832-772-7789. Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Batiste understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 718-986-80. Welcome back to Injustice on the Sphere TV, where we discuss the laws of the land and how they affect you, the people. I'm your host, Brennan Dunn. You can reach me on Twitter at Legal Mind. That's mine with a Y because there's always a question to be asked and answered. Joined as always with the hostess with the mostess, Alicia Ford. How are you, Alicia? Hi, Brennan. I'm well. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Injustice on the Sphere TV. My name is Alicia Ford, your host, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Adley on Sphere. So, Brennan. Yes. What is going on today? I mean, been around the world and I, 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 I can't seem to re understand why this news is the way it is all the time. What do you mean? I mean, we got ridiculous things going on all over the, the country. So I guess we'll just jump right in and start over with Louisiana. Mm -hmm. You know, the big boot. Oh. Uh, okay. You know, it's always something race related when we talk about the news. And I, I think this, I'm, I'm kind of hard. I'm trying to decide if this is simply race related or just stupid law. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a 17 year old standout uh, three sport athlete uh, over in South Bossier City, Louisiana, mm -hmm. 17 years old, who was just charged with child pornography because a 16 year old uh, girl sent him nudes and he sent nudes back to her and they had this sexting uh, issue going back and forth. My, uh, the daughter, though the young lady's mom, found out about it, called the police. Police charge him with this uh, child pornography. Mm -hmm. um, it, it obviously the girl gets nothing. Uh, there is a misdemeanor charge that can go mm -hmm. along with a 16-year-old sending uh, images, uh, mm -hmm. but obviously the child's pornography is a felony felony level offense and the 16 year old for for from what i can find out was not charged with anything mm, which well, she should have been because if it's a law for you well, to send a text i, I mean if it, if, if you're gonna law, get him but i think i don't and, and again i don't know if this this should even be a law right here as far as i mean when you have two young people they're both high schoolers mm -hmm. um that you know when you're having sex uh as as young people depending on at least in the state of texas you have a three-year gap mm -hmm. with which to have that sex so mm -hmm. if you're 16 and that person's on the cusp of, of 19 mm -hmm. then guess what it's still legal mm -hmm. um but in this case in louisiana isn't it like the sweetheart law or something like yeah, that they're you know, generally they've sweetheart got, laws right. yeah for kids young kids exactly so but in this case you've got a 16 and a 17 year old still in high school together one could be a sophomore one can be a junior and guess what this junior gets charged with a crime for doing something that Every single child, they say they have a stat that says 54% of kids under the age, age of 18 have done this. Um, not to say it's right or wrong, but the fact that it's prevalent and it's when you have over 50% of people doing something, it's a standard. Mm -hmm. um, and he's charged, but she gets away scot free. Now, another part of this is obviously he's black, she's white. So I don't know if this is a black mm -hmm. versus white thing or if this is just, again, a dumb law. Um, so we in Louisiana? 
We are in Louisiana. Okay. Um, for now. For, uh, for now. Um, hmm. I would say it's a mix of both. Okay. You know, um, when I think about it, we all know, I mean, first of all, I'm really mad that these parents don't know what, like, they're tr- really trying to act like they don't know what the business is. Mm-hmm. Like, this has been going on since high school was probably invented. Right. So, I mean, just in a different form, you know, manner or whatever. Now it's just easier for these children to make bad decisions. Because right. I know if and I was, if, if, if somebody called me when I was 16 or 17, I'd probably be in jail three or four times over, you know, because, I mean, shoot, I'm just trying to let women know the gift that I have is beautiful. That's all this man is probably doing. And, and the fact is, she sent it to him first. You know, I mean, I just don't get it. So whole parts of me are stuck on the nonsense you said before we got to the actual. Well, you're stuck story. on the fact that I'm beautiful. I can I can show you better than I can talk to Please, you about it. Guys out there in Facebook land, I am in the twilight zone. But to bring me back into reality, what I'd like to say is that for the most part, when you think about kids and when you think about their actions, I don't know um, whether or not, you know. It is racially motivated or it's not racially motivated. I can say that there's probably a strong likelihood that these people didn't want their daughter getting these pictures from this black boy. Mm. That I mean, at the end of the day, that's really probably what it comes down to. So you think if this has been a white boy, they probably would have said, just don't do that again. Don't get, look, who is it? Let me call his Stop parents that. and let his parents know what you guys are doing. Oh, baby, what is you yeah, doing? Exa- and, you know, it would just be, you know, kind of like a, hey, you wasn't going to you know oops but i mean at the same point it says that in louisiana the law states that anyone under the age of 17 found to be sexting any person of any age can be charged with a misdemeanor so it's also incumbent upon him and his family to press forward to make sure she's charged with a misdemeanor because she was the initiator of all these actions Mm. so he wasn't even the one that was like hey girl you want to see what i got Mm. it's a prize but no she was like you know there's so much about me that you should see in a video that's naked she sent it first she then he his family should go after and press the da to make sure she's charged too Mm. i mean that's it's own. I hate to say this is fair because this these are kids' lives, right. but it's only fair. And and Melinda Tillman asks a question: that Was there any reason given as to why the young white girl wasn't charged? And the only thing I can say is probably because she she her her text was caucasian, um, you know. And, oh and my gosh, that's the only yes. thing. I mean, yes. you know, texting while caucasian is different than texting while black so in this instance i don't know if there's a reason Mm -hmm. that was ever explicitly given but Mm -hmm. that's the best one that i can come up with with all of my legal expertise is that caucasity is real and she was afforded the benefits of her skin being anti-melanin and i i really i as much as i want to just go brennan you're wrong you're not so i mean it's kind of like I really hate that so you know what I'm gonna stop putting this on 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 white people I'm gonna start put stop putting this on black people I'm gonna start putting this on people themselves and to really make sure they're monitoring their kids I mean if I talk to any child that's you know younger I'm like look it's best if you just stay off social media let them take a picture let them snap it in time don't video none don't show them none get off that snapchat because you don't know what's going to come back to haunt you and these kids aren't thinking past the second that they're filming whatever instant gratification they're trying to get and they're not seeing the long-term repercussions of their actions which is what's going on here Mm -hmm. you know had he thought like i could get in trouble i could go to jail for sending this little girl a picture of me naked he sure wouldn't have did it. Right. And so it's kind of like at some point I'm going to put the onus on these people's families, on their parents. And I'm not saying parents are going to know everything that a child does because there's no way you're going to know everything your child does. But you need to be a little bit more, especially in the dynamic that he's involved in. Right. Just be a little bit more aware of what's going on. Well, and <clears throat> sometimes it's hard to, mm-hmm. to, to regardless of the environment that mm-hmm. you're in, you're going to get railroaded by the system. And we, we're going to take into yeah. that account and shift over to another state yeah. and talk about Georgia. Uh-oh. And this, what happens in Georgia, what well, doesn't stay in Georgia, first of all, but what, okay. what, what just happened in Georgia is it's indicative of the way blacks are viewed and how they're allowed 
to live life versus their uh, majority counterparts. And what I mean by that is you've got in Clayton County, Georgia, a uh, judge has denied Jesse Murray a, the use of a stand your ground defense uh, in a murder trial. Okay. Now, you might be saying, well, what, what is, what's all that about? First of all, I want to you to understand what the stand your ground um, theory is. Uh, if you feel like you are in danger or if you have been put in danger, then the law allows for you to defend yourself by the use of deadly force. This was infamously used and people became familiar with the term during uh, the George Zimmerman uh, trial in which George Zim Zimmerman uh, used the stand your ground law against mm -hmm. Trayvon Martin mm -hmm. uh, and Trayvon Martin was killed, had a hoodie on, bag of Skittles. Zimmerman said he felt threatened because this man simply was walking down the street uh, and he decided to uh, use utilize that stand your ground defense. Um, so Jesse Murray was with his wife and and, and who's the wife and who's the mother of his children uh and they were at a bar and murray is approached by a former police officer and three of his his friends mm -hmm. they end up getting into an altercation in which it seems by all intents and purposes that the former officer and his friends were the initiators of the altercation in the midst of this murray pulls out a gun uh to defend himself because he's presumably getting his ass whooped by by these four men and the gun accidentally goes off is what murray says killing uh at least one of the one of the people now he's charged with murder because of this the judge says that hey because you accidentally char discharged your weapon you can't use the stand your ground law because you had to have intentionally meant to stand your ground by that use and by that method mm -hmm. so ultimately what the judge is, is 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 saying, if you if you really extrapolate his words, is that you should have gotten your ass beat first and then used your gun and then there wouldn't have been an issue. I I'm without the right words to to really say what I want to say in terms of how much bullshit this is. Because you've got a man here who's defending himself and his family from four, four guys, one of them being a police officer or a former police officer. And he is the one that gets railroaded and is looking at doing hard time. And a judge, having seen the facts, says, you know what, if you had done it this way instead with this with this nuance, I'd let it ride complete and utter bullshit um i absolutely agree and actually i think the judge is taking it a little too far when he's saying that the judge stated that it does not appear that the men were in the vicinity were acting in such a way that can cause the defendant to reasonably believe bullshit like you are inserting your own biases and belief you aren't even there there isn't even a video there is nothing going on here where the judge should be making such kinds of assertions based on, I mean, no, no, no. Because first of all, the circumstances lend itself to say, if there are four men against me, they can all kill me. The four of them can jump me one and my wife, who is probably of no help anyway, mm -hmm. And hurt us. So, I mean, the, the, the threat level wasn't even proportionate between the two. You have a, a, a police officer and three people, effectually 800 pounds, probably if everybody's 200 pounds, against you, and you're trying to defend yourself. There is no reason why he should have had to, one, take a licking and then pull out his gun because the firing was unintentional in the struggle. No, what should have let you know that self-defense was going on was the fact that there was a struggle, mm -hmm. okay? So when the resultant actions from a struggle where I am trying to protect are all self-defense, right. regardless of if my gun is going off, whether I intentionally did it or unintentionally did it, the act that I was involved in was self-defense. Mm -hmm. So I don't see how the judge could sit there and delineate to the minutia about something that he doesn't know about when if you look at everything that's going on every action of that man stood in line with self-defense whether the gun went because who's to say that something wouldn't have been where 
he said, you know what? F all this. And I'm going to shoot you anyway. I, th that could have happened too. And he still would have been in the action of self-defense. The unintentional firing in the midst of a struggle defending yourself is still self-defense. Right. I mean, because I mean, to me, this this reads that let's assume for a second instead he had picked up a bottle, you know, the, whatever was whatever was closest mm -hmm. to him to just to swing it and says, well, you know what? I was just trying to swing it to get them away from me. But the dude just happened to bend his head over and I busted bust him in the, in the head and ended up killing him on a, on accident. So that means that the swing because I didn't mean to swing the way I originally intended and this man's head got in the way. I can't use a defense. You I, I just would don't almost think that this judge went to Brennan's school of being on death row. You would almost think I, if I they didn't the die, the, if they didn't die said. the way that they intended to die, you know you're good for that, right, Brennan? <laughs> if they didn't go for Brennan's school of the way you should have went to jail, but no, but seriously. I, I I fully agree with this. The judge was way out of bounds, out of pocket, and you, I want them to appeal this to the hill. They need to go ahead and let this. I mean, I don't even understand what's going on with that judge. And that judge is ridiculous. And I would actually probably try to, I don't know what I would do with that judge. Well, I, it just because there ain't too much you can do. But um, at the end of the day, I believe that, you know, I, I agree that, as his attorney says, if being assaulted by three men is not grounds for a person to defend themselves by any means necessary, then what is exactly? And I, and I totally agree. I am doing exactly what is supposed to happen. Yeah. And we have a question from uh, Andrea Soders. It looks like uh, mm -hmm. on this, it says, could it, could a uh, intimidation defense have been used? I think what you're asking is could, could, uh, this young man have said that he was either coerced or intimidated into into doing it. Mm -hmm. I don't think the answer to that would be no. It would be an inappropriate defense mm -hmm. uh, because he wasn't uh, coerced into doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. He was provocated, mm -hmm. uh, but not coerced into doing it. Um, quite frankly, the defense that he tried to use, which is self-defense, mm -hmm. is the most applicable in mm -hmm. this situation. I mean, you're getting your ass beat mm -hmm. by four men you are defending not only yourself, mm -hmm. but you. the law also the, says that you can defend the, another person mm -hmm. too uh, and use the appropriate force. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, the only thing that separates him from any other person that utilizes the, this defense is that the manner in which he did it, he didn't intend that particular result. I, I, I'm, I'm going to, I mean, and I get what you're saying, but I'm going to wholeheartedly disagree. Like, even if my gun did accidentally go off, I'm not saying that oh. they're right. I'm oh, saying yeah. that that's what yeah. the application here is for this judge. Yeah, like say, no, 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 no. Because no. I'm just like, wait a minute. I'm still like, I until I until I lay down and say beat my ass, I'm in self defense mode. So I mean, hopefully there is really some justice that's going to happen for this man because I I mean, if the judge can't see what's clear, then I would hate to see. I would hate for it to be a dark night mm -hmm. in that court. Because well, and, and, and another part of me wonders, you know, because this was again, this is another one of those situations where you're wondering which factors play a role. This is a former police officer. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, that, that that was involved in this. I haven't heard anything about what was done to this former police officer and these other three, gentlemen. Three, these three that, men. You know, well, one of them died. But uh, the, these other two guys that of any substantive uh, uh, reconciliation with their actions. And I don't understand how, what is a black person supposed to do? Mm -hmm. I mean, you get your ass whooped by cops and get, get, get killed by cops and there's no justice for that. Um, you, you get your ass whooped in the streets by some white people and you try to defend yourself and guess what? There's no justice for that. Uh, you, you, you send out your beautiful photos of yourself to a white lady just like whistling uh, down the street like Emmett Till. Uh, okay, and okay. there's no justification for that Absolutely. You know, or justice for that. So in, in no part of this society right now am I seeing that we, we have any type of synonymous mm -hmm. uh, retribution for what I do and what you do. You know, the, the, the only person that can say that they have, they have any type of feelings about the such situation that say you know what i can feel where you're coming from it's probably a hispanic person or a muslim person um that can say you know we're in that same type of boat oh okay um but i don't see 
how and why we are told to act right, pull your pants up, don't wear hoodies, speak to the cops correctly, you know, do this, that, and the other. But no matter what we do, we are still on the losing side and of the battle. And it's so funny because they were trying to make a bill out in uh, out, out in Wisconsin, the Otis, the Onsen's Otis or Anna states, one of them states where it ain't nothing going on. Okay. And they um, were basically trying to to block protesting. And, and, and one of the, the arguments is people protest because their voices are heard in no other avenue. Mm-hmm. Like they have tried other avenues and those avenues don't work. Mm-hmm. So this is what I'm left with. Right. And so what you said all goes to that thought and that stream. Like people get fed up because everything that we do, no matter how we do it, is still not enough because you make up a newer, a newer, better, brighter requirement that we still fulfill, that we are still never able to be treated the same. So, I mean, at the same time, we're living in a society, again, we are in, I think, one of the most racially contentious societies that yeah. I've been in in a long time. People want to sit here and act like shit is sweet, yeah. and it's not. Yeah. And, you know, so it's kind of, you can even, I would even say this is getting as good as the civil rights era. Yeah. This is getting as good as. Well, and we got to step up as 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 black people, as brown people, as Muslim people, and actually people, work together on and, this and, and fight together, not even work together. Because if I, for me, to, I feel like I live in a society right now where I'm 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 black enough. I'm, my blackness precludes me from being a real American, but I'm also too American to not be able to protest the way I want to, i.e. Colin Kaepernick. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Where as a black man You're too black to, right, to do it the, wait, you're too black you're, to, to, to to be in that to to exercise the avenues that somebody that is white has well, for self expression. Well my blackness precludes me from being a real mm-hmm. American, but I'm too American to protest the way I want to do it mm-hmm. and, and say this American doesn't do it American, right for me. Yes. So I don't know where, where do I stand then? I, am I three fifths of a person still? Because you really haven't given me five fifths of the rights that I've been that you told me I was going to be afforded. But anyway, that's that's a, a story for another day. We want to let you guys know that uh, uh, that this episode is brought to you by uh, the makers of The Sphere TV. We ask that you subscribe to our mm-hmm. show on all the major platforms, Absolutely. including including reviewing our show on iTunes with constructive feedback, sharing uh, this Facebook Live post and the entire show with your family and friends. And if you can, drop some coins. Donate to our mission to bring enriched and inspired content each and every week. Uh, you can go to www.thesphere.tv forward slash donate. Drop some coins off to keep this going because we can't make it happen unless those Benjamins are talking. And speaking of of all about the Benjamins baby letting you know that this portion of the show is sponsored by the Houston Housewives of Finance did you know that only four states in the United States offer financial education 33 percent or more than 77 million Americans don't pay their bills on time 39 percent of Americans carry credit card debt from month to month and 39 percent of adults say they don't have enough savings don't become one of these statistics let Houston Housewives of Finance advise you on increasing your cash flow and becoming your own money manager by scheduling your complimentary personal financial strategy contact Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700 Zero zero four four six three, or email them at info at Houston Housewives of Finance dot com. Ask how you can participate in the complimentary financial literacy workshops near you. Houston Housewives of Finance are the new faces of the new age of financial services. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Facebook has been real talking to you live we will uh make sure that we come back and see you next week and please make yes. sure to watch the rest of the show it'll drop later on this evening as always uh you can watch it on itunes soundcloud stitcher www.thesphere.tv google android see you later. you got Facebook. the internet search so we're gonna keep it um in the south uh, and, and mosey on over to mississippi uh, where an appeals court has allowed what, what some are considering the worst anti-LGBTQ law ever to go effect in Mississippi. And what sets a precedent and sets a, a, a head-on collision course with the Supreme Court uh, over their anti-discrimination laws, or lack thereof. A three-judge panel of the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals 
uh, lifted a lower court injunction that basically, uh, to, to cut through all the legal jargon, allows for businesses and government employees to decline service to the LGBT Q people, and that includes bakers, florists, county clerks, and even some working at the Department of Motor Vehicles based on religious beliefs. It allows the discrimination in housing and employment against same-sex couples or any individual with a same-sex couple. Uh, businesses and government under the law can regulate where, where transgender people go to the bathroom. It allows mental health professionals and doctors and nurses to turn away LGBT individuals. And it allows state funded adoption agencies to turn away LGBTQ uh, couples. Basically, you can act like we did in the 17, 18, and early 1900s and treat. Uh, LGBTQ members of society like complete and unadulterated shit and as if they do not belong in your country, in your state. I don't understand how the Fifth Circuit, for, first of all, it boggles my mind that a, that, a, that a lower court put an injunction in place. Injunction is something that, some, something that says stop, you can't do this. Uh, the, the lower court put an injunction in place saying no, this is wrong. And then the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals said, eh, guess what? We're going to rescind that and let it ride. How is this not against the separation of church and state? I, I mean, because if they're saying that, for example, a taxpayer-funded adoption agency could refuse that because it goes against that, whose relig who's religious freedom are we talking about? Is it the state agency's religious freedom? Mm -hmm. I mean, because in essence, all of those people working there are only actors of the agency they are not the agency they are agents of the agency so as agents of the agency they should only be carrying out what the agency's mission is it should not be left up to that insular person's decision to decide that me servicing you goes against my religious freedom well guess what guess what if i'm a state agency it ain't your religious freedom. This is the state of whomever, Mississippi's right to have an agency. And that would actually be infringing and intertwining the two. So I don't even see how they let this go on the state level when they're giving the individuals who work there the ability to discriminate based on their religious preferences when they're acting on behalf of the state hmm. giving these services. Well, one of the things that the uh, Fifth Circuit said is that they believe that the plaintiffs didn't have standing yet uh, to to actually bring the suit. Standing meaning that you haven't been injured by this mm -hmm. law, and so uh, because because the law hadn't actually taken effect yet, that they there was no injury in fact based on the law. And so maybe once the law took effect and somebody showed an injury because of it, then it would be ripe for you know what. For Let it. me go. If anybody, any woman would like to take a trip to Mississippi with me to go buy a piece of bread from a local baker. I will go with you. And we shall be injured together from being able to buy this bread because we are supposedly lesbians. So, I mean, when you... Well, now you're talking my language. Oh, Maggie. my gosh. Stop Speak a little it. bit more. No, I will not speak a little bit more. I need, I need a visual no. because I'm a very visual person. I get it. We so, will walk into the bakery and I ask for... We'll you ask for the, the, the bread and they'll tell us no because you're lesbian. Now, and is that, bread a euphemism for something? It means... It's it's a euphemism for boy if you don't stop. Mm, but so, either Can't way, stop, won't stop. I'm just really upset about the fact that, you know... It's I mean, if you're a private citizen, if you are a private citizen, having your own private citizen services, you can deny service to whomever you want to, because that's your right. Mm. But if you are a state agency, that ain't it ain't the same, son. It's not the same. It's not the same. So, I mean, I, I really feel like, you know, they really need to uh, stop this. There's no separation here. Well, and I think that. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like in this particular instance with the the appellate court saying that there's no standing because there's been no injury. In fact, I kind of disagree with that premise as well, because just the very notion of first of all, you could, this this in every shape, form or fashion is the type of discriminatory law mm -hmm. that any any court in its right mind mm -hmm. would say, no, this is on its face mm -hmm. uh, unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that you could as a as an appellate court see that. The harm is in the possibility of it even being passed exactly. because once it's passed, then it's it's. 
I shouldn't have to wait till somebody tells me no because of the law for you to be able to say that this law is causing injury before the fact. I mean, the injury is in its application in being written into law mm -hmm. because what you're doing is you're, you're you're telling people that they can put something into place and somebody has to be base. It's like saying you can't you can't get protection until you've been beaten, which and is then, back but, going but, if, but if I call you and say, hey, dude has a gun to my face and he's about to shoot. But has he shot you yet? But dude has a gun to my face and he's about to shoot. I'm sorry, I can't get anybody out fact? there. I can't get anybody out there yet because you're still talking to me, which means that you're still alive and you haven't been shot yet. Yeah. That's what that's what this tells you. And mm -hmm. that the, the, the government, that the, that the court system is saying, have you been shot yet? No. No. I'm trying to get you to help me mm -hmm. before I am shot. Mm -hmm. Treat me like a regular person. Mm -hmm. Know that this is so egregiously wrong that you will stop it in its tracks before it gets anywhere that it can actually do me real harm. I just don't. I don't get it. And I get where I get Mississippi. It, well, it's not just because this is a fifth, the Fifth Circuit. Well, it, well, it's a, it's a Mississippi law that was right. well that was so it's only in Mississippi. Right. So I for mean, now. but but for now, but it was upheld by the Fifth Circuit, which we're in. Right. So I mean, it could you know mosey on over to Louisiana and Texas as it probably will try to. Um, and so you know when you think about it, I I I don't know what's going on in today's society. I have no idea what's going on. I don't know about these laws. I don't know about the ch separation of church and state anymore. Like, I'm a Christian. I love being a Christian. I enjoy it. Do I care if you're a, Bo a Buddhist, a Muslim, an atheist, or whatever else? Look, I want your dollars. I don't care if you're lesbian, gay, trisexual. I don't care. I want your dollars because we're in a capitalistic society. And they are sitting here trying to superimpose some antiquated notions onto society that is forever changing. All of these baby boomers, y'all going to be dead soon, like real talk. And so now this country is changing and they're going to really have to figure out who the new face is. And if and, and they're playing a, a really, really, really strategic game. They're trying to get these minorities that aren't black on their side because then they will now take up the new spaces that have left the conservative party mm -hmm. if we can turn you against the idealized versions of blackness and poorness and le and, and, and sexual freedom and religious freedom that we've been so against then we have our base still so i mean it, they're playing chess not checkers yeah. um but i really hope that you know, somebody hurry. When does this uh, that somebody hurries up and goes into somewhere and is denied service and then it can finally be overturned? It's just dumb. Um, so we're going to keep it in the South. I, I, I really Have we wish, left the South? I, I really wish New York would do some stupid shit or, like, or Washington, yeah, Oregon, California. I mean, somebody else do some dumb shit um, over in Fayetteville, North Carolina, uh, a w woman. The law, there's a law that says a woman can't back back out of sex once it's underway. A uh, woman was involved in consensual sex at first with a young, uh, with another guy. Her name is Aaliyah Palmer. Uh, she was at a party when a man pulled her into the bathroom for sex. She went in there willingly, uh, but then she told the Fayetteville police that uh, the sex turned violent. And once she told the man to stop, he didn't listen. Um, fast forward, and the man was was not charged with a crime because again north carolina has a law that says a woman cannot revoke consent after sexual intercourse begins this is one of those issues and situations to me where it's it's hard for me to discuss this with with first of all it's hard for me to discuss it with a woman because i know the words that i want to say are going to be lost in translation and, and probably met with a barrage of brick walls um but you don't give this me is, any credit you know, I, you're right. Mm -hmm. um, but this is one of those issues where the philosophy of something or the idea of something is wonderful, but the practice can be so hard to 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 put in place and, and the execution of 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 justice for it mm -hmm. put in place, because. I understand that one can want to have sex and then one can stop wanting to have sex. Uh, understand that completely. I also understand that 
in certain instances, people will also have regrets about the sex that they had and say, you know what, I really didn't want this in the first place or I didn't like it and you use certain things or be vindictive even when they no longer like a person and say, um, you know what, I don't like what happened because it has happened before. I think that it's it's such a hard, and I, excuse that pun, it's such a hard issue um, when dealing with, with, with this type of rape scenario where you're talking about mm-hmm. someone who's in it you know mm-hmm. how is she saying stop yeah. you know how what's going on mm. in this did she did she actually push him away Absolutely. what does that mean see this is why i gave just, you no just, benefit <laughs> of the doubt gave you no credit um just, and again in uh, theory and the philosophy i 100 percent agree i just don't know how you can really adjudicate this um because where's the proof in the pudding i mean the it, it turns into a complete he say, she say. Like with Bill Cosby. No, so, not like but, with Bill but, Cosby. So, but either way, not to make light of a... So, let me say this. Brennan, I'd like to make a confession to you. I need to lose eight pounds. I also want to eat some Cheetos. So, I've decided to buy a bag of Cheetos. In the middle of buying that bag of Cheetos, I don't want to eat them anymore because I realize it's going to make me gain eight pounds. So, I, st- I, I deny myself the Cheetos. Should I have to keep eating the Cheetos? I don't understand. But because what you're saying pe- you're about to buy, but then you decide no, no, not I, to No, I've bought them. I'm okay. eating them. Okay. I decide that this isn't helping me with my eight pounds, so I right. stop. I decide in the midst of eating this Cheeto, I say, no. Mm-hmm. No, girl, don't eat them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Should I still be forced to eat the Cheetos? Well, see, your your analogy is terrible. Be- it let is. Let me tell you why. Because... Your analogy involves one person and one person only. This your analogy, an, this an, your so analogy in, says, should I continue to force, be, be forced yes. to eat Cheetos? No one has forced you to eat Cheetos but yourself. And no one has scenario. forced that woman to have sex. But, but, but your in analogy the midst is of terrible. It, in the midst of it, in the midst of it, that woman has the right to say no, especially in this case where that woman says, look. It became violent. That's not consensual sex anymore. Again, like, I, I mean, have no disagreement I, and, with and, you and, and, in the, in and, the and, philosophy and, and, and the theory. And my thing is like this, and I'm going to say this. You say it's hard to prove. What if somebody's going to be vindictive? Shit, it's crazy people all over the place. Like, there's going to be somebody who takes advantage of this law. Like, there's going to be somebody who takes advantage of an assault law and, and tries to hit themselves. I don't know. People are crazy. But in the same instance... I cannot deny somebody justice for something that happened to them based on one person who may use it in the wrong way. I can't deny five people who don't deserve this because one pe- one person's going to use it in the wrong way. To sit there and say, you know, I mean, because in essence, that is saying that no matter what you do as a woman, your body is not yours. You You've keep now putting taken, it as a woman. No, Please because Please take this are, out of the woman scenario and put it as two people okay so then no matter what you do as two people your body is not yours because then this can also be with a man if a man starts having intercourse with a man and he decides look or a woman or a woman i don't know why you just can't give women the credit of being rapist but go ahead okay that you're ridiculous i'm sorry if a man is with a man or a man is with a woman rapist and they both decide that, look, I don't want to do this. This is done. Then absolutely she should have that right under the law to go out and prosecute or have his offender prosecuted. Not because at one point I said, yes, I can't change. Like, do you know how much shit I've said yes to and in the middle of? I was like, you know what? That ain't the smartest thing to do. And then I stop. And then, but what would happen if in the midst of realizing that I am a, I'm making a bad decision, I'm not allowed. For example, in the same thing, I can stop being an accomplice if I try to thwart the action. If I go to the police, they're not going to hold me liable because I've stopped. If they could do it so simply with finding somebody being accomplice in a criminal case, why can they not do this and say a woman can say stop? 
I don't want to do this so anymore. So again, your analogy falls for that last one because in thwarting for a conspiracy charge, the action hasn't actually taken place yet. The so, action, the action, so the action could be in the midst no, no, of no, it. No, no, for the conspiracy, if you are in the act of committing that crime, it's no longer a com- conspiracy. Mm-hmm. It is an action. Okay. There's a conspiracy happens before the fact. So you're con- you- you're conspiring. You're in the, ma- the 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 charge is conspiracy. I can decide that I am no longer going before to conspire and the thwart. Act. I know the point the, the, is. The, the, that's the cons- difference. Your analogy cons- isn't working cons- because you're talking about conspiracy is an entire charge, and then the action is an entire right. charge, which is why you can have conspiracy and the action. You can sit there and say and not be charged with conspiracy because you thwarted what it was. But you would still be charged with the act if you uh, if you if you thwarted took the any action. If you it. thwarted the no. action, then what are you? If you if you actually engage in the act. And then say, you know what? I won't do this anymore. You can still be charged okay. if you if y'all are in the planning stages and haven't started it yet. And then you decide, you know what? I don't want to do this. And let and me you, stop this from happening. That's the that's point. The that, that, but again, that's not what happens here because you are I'm in, in the, the, I'm in the act. Yeah, of I'm in the act sex. of conspiring. You're not discussing I'm in the sex. act of conspiring, which is what? a crime. But Why, you, how how are you ignoring the fact that conspiracy is a crime? Are you? Are you are we even talking about the sex anymore? Because you've gone off. Okay. Anyway. The deep okay. End on this. Okay. You can sit there and say that I'm wrong, but I refuse but, to believe you because okay, I'm not. Well, I mean, the I'm law not. will tell you. I well, don't have to I, tell I, you. The law ain't gonna tell me nothing. But girl, you are wonderful. Uh, so, well, but okay, even well, still, the law lies too. so yeah, he been lying to you too. Uh, uh, but, so either way, yes. But again, I'm not. I'm not saying that the 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 the. the theory and philosophy behind what you're saying is wrong i have no disagreement with that i agree with you but on the other hand i understand why this law is in place because and i'm not saying i agree with the law hold on i'm not saying i agree with the law being in place but it's because in one instance when rape is about to rape is is the, the the idea of rape is that you are about to engage in something that i don't want it's easy to have a clear-cut demarcation between did she want it did she not or did he want it or did he not then a clear-cut once demarcation start, when i say no with, once you start dealing with well while we were having sex i felt uncomfortable and really didn't want it anymore well as a dude or as a woman I don't necessarily know that you didn't want it. How did you say no? You know, there's, there's so much there's so much ambiguity in that. And if you're going to label somebody a sex offender for the rest of their life, I think that there should be a little you less have, ambiguity it, in the action. And you know what? Let's just let the, and let's just not sit here and make women such callous cows or whatever you want to think that it's not where, just about no, women, who, Alicia. Whoever is gonna because who is this? Who is disproportionately affected by these laws? Women. Like you can sit here and, and try to relabel this shit all you want to, but women no are the ones that anything. are disproportionately affected by laws by like this. It ain't some trove of men out here because it's men making the laws against this. Now, what I will say about that is how can you find a line of demarcation? When I tell you no, I don't want to have sex anymore. I've demarked. I've put my foot in the sand. I've drawn a fucking box in front of you that says I no longer want to engage. It's not a question of she's like, hmm, but you don't know if she's saying no. You don't know if the next if person the is saying no. If the woman testifies and says that she says no, who is to say? Did you that read she... the transcript? I'm saying that in every situation, a woman or a man is not going to say no. They can say, well, I was uncomfortable. I tried to move away First a little of all, bit. That it, Those you know, aren't necessarily <laughs> demarcation lines. Okay, and that's why I'm saying that this is amb- ambiguous in its nature. That's the only we thing that I'm saying. We are going to have to agree to, to disagree right for about Brennan. you. But what I'm going to decide to do is tell you how y'all can get more of this interesting content here because this portion of the show is bo- is sponsored by the sphere and are you starting your business and looking for a place to advertise do you have a need to reach out to thousands of people across the world and bring your brand and sell your product if so get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at the sphere we offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms including itunes google play soundcloud youtube and stitcher plus we have a vast demographic reach within the united states as well as modern countries across the globe our enriched content and inspiring dialogue coupled with your strategic with our strategic ad is surely to hit the mark every time call us today at area code 832-772-7789 or send an email over to adverse advertise at the sphere.tv 
All right, so we got one more topic we're going to talk about. We'll probably uh, go through this fairly quickly because it's really more of the same old uh, stuff that we've been hearing. Um, but three Chicago police officers have been indicted on felony charges um, in dealing with conspiracy uh, to cover up the fatal shooting of Funny, that's young a crime. Laquan McDonald. No one ever argued that it wasn't La- Laquan McDonald by a white officer. Uh, Cook County Special Grand Jury approved the uh, indictment, uh, saying that they did more than merely obey an unofficial code of silence. They lied to prevent investigators from learning the truth. The three officers are Thomas Gaffney, David March and Joseph Walsh. Uh, They were all in the video shown where Mr. McDonald was gunned down by Officer Jason Van Dyke and footage captured uh, on video by police dash cam. Um. Essentially, this this is that that code of blue rearing its ugly head mm-hmm. again. But at least in this instance, we've got, I guess, an indictment coming down. We really don't know if something's going to happen about that. It would it will it would bother my spirit if these officers actually get convicted and face some time for lying. But we have officers that get off for killing. That that will really actually enrage me yay for it if it happens but also what the fuck and i agree i mean it's kind of like but all right what about the officer who killed this man you know and when when we think about it it's kind of like is this a step forward a step back or is it really just a step sideways like we didn't move anywhere but to the you know are, did we just shift a little over like because to me yes we're happy that we can now and if anything you know what? Let me take that back. If anything, if they are convicted, I would be happy, like you said, because hopefully we'll start to set a precedent to other police officers that look all this code of blue and all this affirmative stuff that you're doing. It really can have a negative effect on you, because when you actively try to cover up what is the truth and hide it we will take you to task and maybe possibly it'll send some kind of message across the rippling seas to other police officers this isn't what's good mm. like i mean and, is and, it really and, going to I, it'll I mean, just say I, I get your only, lie better i mean i can only hope you know i mean i can sometimes I that's all i got and, and this hope and, is fickle because i mean at most it tells you hey before we talk to anybody we need to make sure we got our story straight like 100 yeah that's all that's all that says like clean up your shit first um because it doesn't do anything to deter or your word for the day thwart what's going on yeah it just makes sure get your lie straight um and <sighs> i don't know we'll we'll see what happens with this i'm just i'm just irritated by he's it. he's really upset guy so send him a warm message that tells him that sometimes not any time today in the last two segments that mm-hmm. he was right but or outside if you want to send a message alicia you can always send me one of those uh those types of pictures that that just makes every man feel better about himself and it can be with the, this other woman that you're going to uh, Mississippi with. I'm just throwing some ideas out there. Um, All of but, which are rejected. Well, thank you. Even That's Jesus a, was denied. Oh Christ. my gosh! But did we? this portion of the show is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, our vision is to create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care and a lifetime of dental wellness. We are committed to the finest possible oral care and the overall health and well-being of our patients. Elite Dental Wellness is, a built, is built upon a foundation of integrity, expertise, and service. Through our commitment to modern de- dentistry, continuing education, and friendly atmosphere, we strive to make our patients feel that they are part of a family. Dentistry can be scary, daunting, and uncomfortable. Dr. Baptiste and her team work tirelessly to ensure your comfort. Make your appointment today with Dr. Chandra Baptiste at Elite Dental Wellness at 713-789-8680. Alicia, it has been a pleasure, as always, discussing this with you, with the people who we want to make sure know all that there is to know about what goes on I would, in the You land. know what, Brennan? I really enjoy yelling at you, too. Mm. So... Either way, we love that you guys tune in every week to see Brennan incense me with his nonsense. And I just sit here and try as hard as I can to keep a cool head, but it never works. Well, you can go right with the light or you can go wrong and strong with oh Alicia. Um, but I'm your host, Brennan Dunn. You can reach me on Twitter at Legal Mind. That's mine with a Y because there's always a question to be asked and answered, Alicia. And you can reach me at Allianz Sphere on Twitter and Instagram. And we will see you next week. Have a great day, ladies Have and gentlemen. Have a good one.